Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about the survival knife and why you should not buy one. Now in this video, so as always guys, before we get into this, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan gun and gear content just like this. Okay, so in this video, though I know the uh, kind of intro is a little bit more controversial, but today we're really going to be talking about poorly made survival knives and what you should kind of avoid and why you should not buy knives that are marketed as survival knives. Now the biggest reason why I'm kind of anti-survival knife is that the majority of knife makers out there, and when I mean knife makers I don't mean the private, small, kind of mom and pop people out there, but I mean like the large companies, people like Camillus or Gerber or like the really big brand names out there, or even companies like Glock that just so happen to make a survival knife. You know, these companies, the primary reason why I'm against supporting, buying, or endorsing their survival knives is because the actual makers, the manufacturers of these survival knives, don't understand survival at all. They, ser they simply, you know, either contract with a survivalist who may not be that good of a survivalist in the end, or to start with, uh, or they simply try to make their own survival knives based off of what they think you might have to do or what they believe happens during a survival situation. And those beliefs or experiences may not be the most accurate or the most realistic or simply non-existent. They just merely make things up and say, wouldn't it be cool to have a saw on the back of your survival knife? Or maybe they even say, you know, I think I saw a knife as a kid once that had this type or that type of blade shape or this type of gizmo or gadget. And then they put it or tack it onto their survival knife so that they too can exemplify the same level of ignorance as the original creator. So ultimately the problem really though goes back to the fact that when you buy mass produced or mass marketed or just overall poorly designed survival knives made by people who don't have a strong knowledge of the wilderness, the outdoors, or survival itself, you're getting knives that are created for purposes that their original designer has no experience or no understanding of. This is actually a rather common um, thing that happens quite a bit in the world. So uh, frequently with things like, let's just say, Chinese made uh, different pieces of, whether it's phones or gear or even other knives, you know, the Chinese will oftentimes copycat things, but they just make a they just make a face kind of value example or copy of what they're trying to clone. And when this happens, they don't understand the reason why or the purpose behind blade shapes or locking mechanisms or even with phones, they don't understand why a phone was made that way. So you end up getting really weird features that kind of make a knife or a tool or a piece of gear awkward because the designer didn't understand why it existed in the first place or why it came to exist in the first place. So this is why I recommend staying away from mass-produced, mass-marketed uh, survival knives. Now once again, this isn't saying that I think that survival knives as a whole are bad or that you should not have a knife for a survival kit, a bug out kit, or a truck like I have a survival knife in this truck designed for if I get into a, a pinch or a situation where I need a knife and I don't happen to have a knife handy on me, I know that my vehicle has that piece of equipment. So I'm not saying that you should not buy knives for the purpose of a survival kit or a survival loadout or you know to have it in case you need it in a survival situation. You absolutely should do that. But rather I'm trying to say that you should stay away from knives that market themselves or make themselves out to be an ultimate survival knife or even just a simple survival knife because these knives are designed by people who do not know what they're talking about, who do not have the requisite experience to really produce a righteous or worthy tool fit for the types of uh, situations or the types of processes you're going to go through and therefore these knives perform poorly. They either snap in half the first time you baton them or they have worthless, you know, built-in features that either make the knife weaker or make the tool more awkward to use. Uh, you'll see this very commonly 
in, you know, survival hatchets or axes that claim to be do-all, you know, where they have a axe blade or an axe head, you know, and they have a saw built into the handle. And you can tell that these tools are not made by real survivalists because if they were, they would be, well, they wouldn't simply exist because a real survivalist would know that, you know, shaping a head or making a hatchet head very lightweight also makes it very much less useful makes it a lot less useful so they would not create a tool like that and therefore it just simply wouldn't exist and so a lot of times tools and knives especially are created and marketed by people who don't understand what they're doing but merely just trying to catch on to a buzz term or a buzz word and just ride the coattails of trying to make money off of people who are ignorant of that fact so this is kind of my rant, this is kind of my spiel. Um, ultimately, you know, you want to just stick, when it comes down to it, you want to just stick with tried and, tr tried and true tools. You know, things like, let's just say, for instance, just so I happen to have this Condor Pterosaur on me handy. And, you know, this is a pretty good knife, maybe not the best survival knife, but, you know, this Pterosaur by Condor Tool and Knife doesn't really make any bold claims to be the ultimate survival knife or this ultimate wilderness tool that you can use in any situation. It just is simply a knife. It's something that you can go out and you can take it out into the woods and use it. And therefore, it actually does a really good job. It's a very fantastic knife. And this Pterosaur in particular is one of my favorites to teach people basic bushcrafting skills because it has very good handling, a very sharp edge, and it holds an edge quite well. So this knife, you know, it's not terribly expensive. It's less than 50 bucks, but is probably better suited than a lot of things like Gerber's, you know, uh, Bear Grylls Ultimate or I think it's like Ultimate Survival Knife Pro series blade that, you know, is far more expensive, far more overhyped, and far less functional. And that also kind of leads me to the last point, that when you buy knives that have a lot of either fancy grinds, fancy angles, or fancy kind of multi-functionality built into the blade, or you buy knives that have a lot of accessories kind of tacked onto them, like signaling mirrors and ferro rods, you know, you're paying more for that tool because it has those fancy features, even though those fancy features are likely, maybe aside from the ferro rod, completely worthless or useless. So you really want to keep in mind that, you know, it's like, what are you paying for? Are you paying for the blade? Or are you paying for a whole bunch of fancy features that probably won't be that useful to you? And if something like a signaling mirror is more important to you, better than trying to tack it onto the sheath of your knife is honestly just going out buying a full-fledged signaling mirror and keeping that alongside your knife. So, Anyways, that's kind of my spiel about survival knives, why you shouldn't buy one, and why it's a good idea to go out, find a good solid knife for yourself, and use that knife, learn it, and make that a part of your survival kit, or your bug out kit, or your truck survival setup, whatever it is. Uh, you know, that's the real aim that you want. And not only is that a cheaper way to go, a better way to get a higher quality tool, it's also the right way to go because just going out and blindly buying a survival knife or buying a survival tool because there's also survival hatchets and like all kinds of crazy garbage, you know, it was better than just going out and buying that stuff is taking the time to go out, take a simple tool like this, go into the wilderness, make things like shelters, you know, go out, hunt game animals, process those game animals with your knife, you know. Don't just go out and, you know, buy a survival tool, throw it in your backpack and say, oh, now I got my survival knife, I know how to use it. You know, take the time to really learn how to use your knife. Take the time to go out and do things. I mean, you don't have to hunt every season, you know, you don't have to process a moose every moose with your bushcrafting knife to know how to do it. You know, it's something that you have to do every once in a while to keep the skills up. But, you know, go out, practice starting a fire with your knife. You know, go out, even if it's in your backyard, you know, just practice simple skills. That way, you'll be truly ready to use your tools when you need them. Anyways, guys, that's my spiel over and done with. That's why you shouldn't buy a survival knife, and that's why you should buy a normal or regular knife. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.